afternoon to one and all present here. We welcome you to the ICON Best 2021, a virtual conference on built environment science and technology organized by School of Architecture and Interior Design, SRM Institute of Science and Technology. I, Professor Esther Sherin, Associate Professor, Admin Coordinator, School of Architecture and Interior Design, have the honor of hosting the conference room 3 out of 6, ICON Best 2021 on 20th February 2021, Day 1. I welcome one and all and I'm very excited to be amongst all of you in this conference for the afternoon session. I would like to introduce our second speaker for the afternoon session, architect Sibarani Sofian, founder and director of the Urban Plus Indonesia. A passionate urban designer, planner and a business leader with extensive experience in various urban projects in Asia, especially in Southeast Asia and Indonesia. Focusing on executive sustainable urban development, based in integrated multidisciplinary approach. Having worked for leading international firms such as the RSP Architect Planners and Engineers, Skidmore Owing and Merrill, EDAW, AECOM, Sibarani has gained vast experience and worked on various award-winning master planning projects in Southeast Asia from Vietnam, China, South Korea, Taiwan, Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, India and other countries as well. Sibarani is the founder and director of Urban Plus Practice that he has started in 2017 together with several key and urban design experts to assist clients and cities in creating compelling urban projects. With wealth and experience of network of key players in urban developments in Indonesia, Sibarani and team in Urban A Plus have spearheading the strategic infrastructure, driven planning and other master planning communities of mixed use projects which aim to develop better built environment. He has won a lot of awards in 2016 as the best landscape project, in 2015 best planning project. Let us now proceed to architect Siba Rani's Sofian's presentation. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Sibarani Sofian. I'm a founder and principal of Urban Plus, a multidisciplinary design, planning, and uh, architecture and landscape practice uh, based in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, previously, uh, I was a director for a global company called ACOM. So I work in Singapore and Hong Kong for the past. 15 years and I moved to Jakarta uh, about 2011 and I started since in Indonesia expanding the network of uh, ACOM in Indonesia and since 2017 I started my practice together with a couple of other friends. But now probably um, people know me more as uh, the winner of the Nagara Rimanusa which is the Indonesian new capital city of Indonesia uh, in East Kalimantan. And that's all about me. And I would like to congratulate uh, for the ICON Best 2021 conference, the international conference organized by School of Architecture and Interior Design, SRMIST. And uh, I also uh, happy that I can probably share some of the thinking and also some of the works that I've been doing, especially related to the Nagarari Manusa. And I would like to also acknowledge Dean uh, Satish Kumar and Professor Pradipa Kanfanor and also Nippon Payne, who actually introduced uh, this event to me. And also I uh, would like to acknowledge all the other speakers in this conference hoping that uh, the event will be successful and you, uh, all the audience can uh, gain interest and also gain certain insights about uh, the topic of the discussion. 
So uh, I would probably going to share a little bit about the topic of my discussion. My focus will be mostly on the city planning and design, and especially in particular, the case of uh, the competition that we did uh, for the Indonesian capital city uh, or that is going to be relocated in uh, East Kalimantan. Uh, so I'm going to probably spend the next 20 minutes sharing about this and hoping that. So for those of you who probably know a little bit of Bahasa or Sanskrit, you probably can relate with this uh, keyword, three words, Nagara Rimbanusa. Uh, Nagara stands for uh, cities or uh, settlements, or in this matter, is about a representation of government. Yeah, because we are going to be building a city of government center of Indonesia. And the second word is Rimba, Rimba Nusa. Rimba uh, in Indonesian or in, in Bahasa words means forest. The reason why we call this Rimba because uh, Borneo is known as a as a forest heart of uh, Indonesia or probably even the world because Borneo has been the forest for a lot of the Indonesian uh, island. And it is important for us to emphasize this because when we design the city, we are designing in the forest, then it needs to have certain wisdoms. And Nusa, Nusa probably for some of you, Nusa is means uh, archipelago. And that represents who we are, Indonesian, uh, who's actually one of the country that is uh, formed by almost 17,000 uh, islands. So we are archipelagic uh, country. So hence, we have this Nagarari Manusa as our um, sort of like a word, uh, keywords that uh, hopefully uh, encompass all the idea and the vision of our capital city. Okay. So the the TOR or the or the brief of the competition call for three main targets: Indonesian centric or nationalistic development, and the second one is sustainability. Sustainability uh, by by means of environment, sustainability by economic and social, and the third one is uh, going to have an Indonesian. Uh, society forward thinking and uh, technologically advanced by means of smart uh, city and high technology advancements. So these three so-called um, pillars of development uh, geared towards the, uh, the target or the vision of our president Joko Widodo to achieve by 2035 an Indonesia that is advanced society uh, fifth largest economy in the world that really become the advanced society and this city will be the rep uh, representative of that. So with that, we, 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 we transpire that vision into three keywords of Indonesian centric and transformative. Uh, transformative being that we are transforming into the future, inspired by nature as our second uh, principles. And then the third one is Indonesian give to the world because we will showcase what we call the, the advancement of the society and the transformation, especially the high technology uh, into. And then we, we, we want to provide this to the world because we will showcase how we can bring this city together with the nature and the forest all together into a, a model city that we hope that become the uh, new standard for uh the country and hopefully the world okay so one of the wisdom that we we try to propose in creating this city uh the city will be for a population about uh 1.8 million people and then uh the area that we are dealing with is about 256,000 hectares uh 70 percent of that mostly are forests so we are uh, approaching this development by creating the principles that we develop the forest first, because the forest in in uh, in Kalimantan mostly, especially in the East Kalimantan, a lot of them is actually being disturbed right now. Uh, a lot of the mining activity, um, a lot of the production forest that is monoculture, the the forest itself 
losing their um, sort of like uh, natural condition. So it needs to be improved. It needs to be uh, restored. It needs to be reconnected. And we also need to to end the harness certain certain energy that we can get from the forest. Uh, and also we try to pioneer the the research of the forest in the world. Uh, Indonesia uh, being in the tropical belt, uh, we are uh, aspiring to be the pioneer for the forest research in the world. That's what our uh, president uh, envisions about. And then the second one, this is probably interesting for all uh, architects and designers and us, probably the, the built environment uh, specialists, uh, that we try to, to come up with a, a different approach. Yeah. So the city, instead of we are building a city from scratch, but we are actually building a model of development that is uh, as inspired from the forest, and the forest not just a, a normal forest, but we talk talk about especially the tropical forest of Borneo, that is known popular for the the thickness of their uh, the forest and also the the formation of the vertical trees. Yeah, so what we are thinking of is one of the word the keyword that we have is biomimicry. So how we can we can really uh, inspire the building, the system, the utility of the cities uh, that is derived from the system from the forest. As we know, the forest has the emergence, the canopy, the understory, and also the forest floor, which its own character that has certain things like, for example, the water is flowing uh, very well and the breeze and the animal is actually moving freely at the, at the ground level. And some certain animals moving from one branch to another using you know, the, the second level connection. And also the canopy and the emergence is usually to gain energy and photosynthesis happening. And uh, the trunk is actually used for all the energy harnessing and also uh, taking some nutrients from the from the ground. So we use this analogy to create our own version of a model of building that we don't need to, for example, depend so much on the car. We try to lift up the, the platform of the building uh, by piloting means. So we allowing the wind, the water, the people, the activity coming ha happen on the ground floor. Whereas the second and third or fourth story, we can we can connect between the building, uh, so people don't need to spend time going down to the ground floor and out again and up again. Because in Indonesia, a lot of times we are segmented by the system of the blocks and the parcels. So when you can come out from one building, although you are coming to the next door, you have to get out from the front door. And then you have to sometimes even drive to the other side. And then you come in and you have a security check again and then up again. It's really a wasteful activity. So we really try to try to move away from that, uh, you know, pr uh, prototype. And then we try to connect building from one of another without really having to go down to the ground floor, just like the, the orangutan doing on in the in the forest. And we also have all this different layer of green uh, rooftop greenery and also especially the rooftop we use uh, uh, UV, um, uh, uh, sorry, PV uh, panel, uh, so we can harness uh, wind energy. And we also, of course, use the, the ground level as our also utility, the underground level as a utility tunnel derived from the, the root and the buttress uh, roots of the forest, that we have a very highly efficient system that can connect uh, the development from one to another vertically and horizontally. And of course, uh, we will have a car-free zone. We have an electric tram, etc., as our complement. So that's that's one of the so-called the inspired by nature sort of uh, approach that we are looking at. And the second one is, as remember, that we are doing an Indonesian-centric, uh, nationalistic uh, sort of like approach. So we have this um, principle of. Uh, our national identity and values that we apply and symbolize in the space. So we have, for example, Pancasila. Pancasila is the five principles that, that kind of like become our value system in Indonesia. Uh, and it, it consists of five different things like the, the, 
the unity and then uh, we also uh, got abiding uh, sort of uh, uh, society we also have justice we also have democracy and we have also civilization for example yeah then we put it into a, a, a place making so all these five principles we put it in the what we call a lake of Panchasila why lake because you know the archipelago system that we have we put a location of our capital city near to the to the water to the to the bay of balikpapan so and also near to the mangrove and the forest so we really try to blend in side by side the city and the nature and then we try to create place making that that based on the value system that we have for example we also have what we call bineka tunggal ika plaza Bineka Tunggal Ika is means uh, unity in diversity. As you know that we have 34 provinces and we have thousands of subcultures and even language that, that are spanned across the whole country uh, in, in many, many of, uh, of the islands. We need to be united. We, we always have this uh, Bineka Tunggal Ika that we feel that we are stronger together and we can represent our culture in, again, in the plaza. So we try to put in what we call the, the cultural icon of each of our culture represented in this so-called uh, national stage. Yeah? And we also have the statue plaza uh, where we can uh, celebrate our uh, cultural um, identity and also our cultural advancements. Uh, a lot of our uh, um, so-called art, uh, art creator and especially sculpture is famously came from several islands like for example Bali is known for its sculpting skills and it creates a lot of the artistic uh, products that we want to put in the stage national stage or uh, art gallery that can be a pride of our country so and then last but uh, not least is the palace the palace itself really needs to represent a certain style of architecture and this is another discussion that we need to really kind of like taking care of. As you know, the, the, the you know, Indonesia is not a singular uh, identity. Unlike certain Asian country that can be easily represented by one or two symbols, like for example, the Japan with certain temple architecture, for example, or uh, if you look at um, uh, Thai have certain temple architecture that is quite kind of a, uniform and understood, whereas Indonesia is so diverse that we cannot pick one of the cultures representing the rest. So we really need to come up with certain symbolistic and analogic uh, sort of uh, architecture, but that can represent us, but not necessarily coming ex from one or particular culture. So one of the approach that we have is to create the roof, the roof of what we call the Nusantara architecture. Indonesian architecture in the vernacular terms has um, various and almost almost all of the culture has a specific roof systems. And the roof is always a high pitch that uh, pointing up to the sky, representing our respect to, to the God. Yeah? Because in, in many cultures, the, the triangular shape of our roof, be it in the, in the shape of the mountain, in the shape of the trees, like the Hindu uh, temple in uh, Bali, it's sort of like forming like a tree-like uh, roof. Uh, and also we have the horns uh, of, the, of the bull that sometimes also look at as a, a roof of the, of the uh, a building, or for example, in Padang or in uh, North Sumatra. Or we also have some of them that looks like a, a boat. Yeah? So it's all pointy to the sky. But then what we're trying to do is to create the certain language of this architecture on our civic building to, to represent uh, those identity, but in a modern sense, because we need to make it uh, as a, a modern building as well. So this is some of the example of our nationalistic approach uh, and symbolic approach of the, of the uh, built form, yeah? Okay, so then, one of the idea, so I'm sorry that I have to go back and forth. Yeah? This, this one of the, the one that I'm showing is just one of the bit of the area that is just around here, yeah? which is the core of our capital city. But the city itself, as I mentioned, is a, a city of 1. Some, uh, 1.8 million, yeah? almost 2 million people. So half of that population is concentrated around this area 
where we try to to enhance our idea of uh, we are respecting the environment first. We don't build all over the place. We concentrate in certain area, but then around us, we put a lot of our greenery and, and, and forest system restored also. Some area is actually now is being very disturbed. So what we're trying to do is to restore it. We combine it with our natural forest. We enhance certain area to become a botanical garden and plant collection. We enhance the mangrove system near the bay. We also have uh, a protected forest that we call combined together before we develop the city. So by, by committing 70% of the area to be remain green and only develop 30%, we are in, uh, 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 aspiring to develop a, a forest city approach that only we only build within the necessary area. So we have a poly thematic, uh, polycentric thematic clusters, a city of innovation, a city of sports, education, health and, and, and well-being, high-tech city, team, uh, team around uh, what we call the core, the core of our city. Uh, the core itself is a government center that we, we move all our central government, the ministry, and um, almost 250,000 government official will be moving in in the middle. But then it's a whole system of interconnected cities that, uh, that become a complete cities. So you have all the necessity that you need to move in uh, by the time all the government uh, will start to settle in. So all the facility will be, will be happen also uh, concurrently. So we hope that we are resulting in the model for future forests and archipelago city that is transformative to the civilization of Indonesia. The key word transformative is something that our president uh, being very clear about because he wants to say that we are not only moving the capital city as a physical thing, but we are also moving into a new behavior, a new way of doing things. And we left all the bad sort of like habits behind, behind us and we moved to, into a transformative uh, era. Um, for that, we're trying to assemble all the ideas and we try to bring in the focus of our development into an, a concentration of what we call a compact city. So we build in, in, the, in the clusters that is necessary to build, but then we leave mostly all the greenery outside. So if you look at this as an archipelago system, uh, we try to, to create a clusters of these development paths uh, that is almost like the island of uh, archipelago of Indonesia. We are surrounded by green, we are surrounded by water, we are surrounded by nature among us. So we try to strike a balance between how much development area that we need and how much the development uh, area that we live as a nature. So hence it become a constellation like this but then how to organize an urban system we're creating a system of axis we call it the people axis of the nation axis and we have also the government axis where the government work together and we have a, a three-party uh, system the executive legislative and judicative so in that sense the executive being in the center representing the the, the executor of the works that is mandated by the by the people yeah, the people access and we they work hand in hand with the uh, uh, judicative, the, the lawyers, the, the judicial system and also the people representative. And we start to put in all the clusters of the residential nestled around this uh, axis. And what we are hoping is we, we, we can uh, uh, identify the, the development of the nature the relation between the nature, the human, and we also have the the hill behind us, which is the gut. Yeah. So with that, we 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 because this axis happens in a lot of the cities in Indonesia. We we have this uh, realm of the nature, we have the realm of humans, and we have the realm of the the gods or the people. I have uh, something that beyond the, the the human level. Yeah. So things that beyond us that. Uh, that, uh, that have uh, power uh, above us. So that, that relationship continue to be developed within this clan. And we also try to create this um, transformation, yeah, 
uh, we we have a bit and pieces of the idea that uh, we the organize in the transformation or transformative effort. One of that is a transformation in the way of working, and later on we will talk about the transformation in the way of uh, uh, living and moving or mobility and and environment. So in this one, in the way of working, one of the way that we want to con uh, continue uh, building on is the relationship between one building to another, uh, especially in the in the sense of the ministry, because a lot of time the Indonesian ministry doesn't work very well, yeah, and then they they work as a as a uh, as a segmented uh, islands and. What we are uh, aspiring for is a connection between all the ministry. So they don't need to leave their building whenever they want to coordinate with the other ministries. So a lot of the time uh, between the ministry coordination, it takes at least one hour, although they are still in the same city because they have to get out from one building and then they have to drive for, I don't know, half an hour probably, but then entering the building itself is also taking another effort creating a lot of disruption in, in connecting between uh, the, the, the uh, ministry, how they work. So as a physical representation, we need to connect them uh, better. And by bringing this level, second level, we also creating a car-free environment and also potential for the green roof and connectivity to, inter uh, to, to engage between the different ministries. Yeah? And the transformation in the way of living, we're looking at, uh, a compact living that is uh, 10 minutes by walking distance uh, oriented uh, towards uh, public transport uh, nodes in the middle. So we create a, a certain um, sort of like defined and defined edge and development area that you don't you don't sprawl all over and we build a medium density of four to eight story building using a lot of the material locally source. As you know, in Kalimantan or in Borneo, we don't have a lot of uh, sand and, and rocks. So, but then we are plenty of uh, a timber, a very good high quality timber. And we used to export this to Japan. We export this to America with the FSC uh, requirement that has a very stringent sustainable standard of uh, foresting and also reforesting uh, after we, we take the crops. So that can be used as, and we are thinking that we are putting this as a, also as a building material that is structurally uh, advanced. So we are not only just using as a facade or as a layer uh, for the floor, but we can use it as also as a, a structural um, system made of timber. So with that, we can achieve, we are targeting about 60% of locally sourced are in certain area we will in government building, we use 80%. And we also encourage uh, urban farming so we can also secure the local food production. We also opening up the ground as what we say in the biomimicry concept of the forest city, we allow the ground floor to, to move uh, the wind and also the water and also the activity creating a certain comfortable walking zones. As you know, in, uh, in probably, you know, in, in, in Borneo, uh, the, the temperature is pretty high and also humid. So it's high humid in a tropical area. A lot of people are not very keen to walk outside because of, you know, the heat and also the perspiration. So we need to create a lot of the wind corridor and having a lot of the green fingers around us, helping us to create that kind of breeze moving and we are oriented and allow the building orientation to to allow the wind to move around yeah and then we can use we actually uh, doing right now um moving the uh, using the build uh, um, uh, uh, thermodynamics modeling to allow the building orientation to allow the wind to move through and the third way of transformation is in the way of moving yeah so we uh, we have a, a, a large area that need to be covered, but then we have to make sure that uh, is 80% public or public accessible, uh, public oriented uh, development that using the public transport and other means of transportation, uh, non-motorized like the bicycle, the walkway, 
and also trams uh, and electric trams are in some in some level we are aspiring to have an autonomous system car system the driverless car so we are now in the stage of using uh, electric vehicle in the country right now and later on we will transforming into the autonomous system and to some extent the logistic we could use also the drone courier or even taxi courier drone uh, uh, in the future and the last transformation that we are proposing is the way of caring the environment so one of the target that we are uh, focusing on as i mentioned before about the wind and the breeze having our city being nestled around the, the nature and the water and of course with certain wind direction uh, be it in the monsoon season or in the uh, non non monsoon season, we are uh, aspiring to have our building system uh, able to live side by side and being in the surrounding of the nature, and really trying to build the ecosystem and restore it, and trying to create a lot of opportunity for uh, a. Um, sort of like a mutual relationship between building and um, uh, human and also the nature. And one of the targets that we are also, I think the government will build very much soon in the, in the first stage is the International Center for Tropical Forestry. So we aspire to be the leader for the tropical forestry uh, research. We are now already in certain aspect, uh, having a lot of our scientists and researchers working on the a lot of the uh, natural research of our forests and also our uh, habitats. Uh, but I think the, the government, especially the president, is committed to do the, the international level research center. And of course, the last thing is one of the last uh, sort of effort is to have a future ready city where we try to, to combine all the infrastructure, the, the mobility system, the building system, the community, and also the governance into a smart system using the smart technology of 5G that will be uh, built in the uh, very early future. So we, we will build this also not in, in one go, we build it in the phases, yeah? So we start with, uh, the, the, the closest city is about 40 kilometer away, which is a city called Balikpapan. And another uh, 20 kilometers to the north is Samarinda. Uh, this is these two cities known as a, a sort of like a center or the core for the, the mining. Yeah, a lot of our uh, coal mining happening around here. So our capital city will be somewhat 40 kilometer in the east, uh, no, uh, direct, west direction where we have the Balikpapan Bay uh, sort of like uh, helping us to create certain connectivity towards the, the bay and using the oceans. And we will start with building the connectivity from the airport to the city, giving us uh, only about less than an hour to be, to, be, to be arriving in the city. And then we start with building the, the road system. And then later on, we build also the, the, the additional cities around it. So we increase the population uh, around 1.3 million. Uh, that's where we start to look into 2035. And of course, we try to do also the, the high-speed rail connection. We will probably also doing the, the reservoir that uh, become the source of the water for the city and also the energy. Uh, the aspiration of creating 100% um, uh, renewables is also happen in the city. So we try to use as much as the uh, 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 re, uh, alternative energy source for our city, be it from the water, be it from the uh, photovoltaic, be it also from the uh, uh, biomass uh, system. Yeah, and then that's why we have all the city around around us uh, also using the, uh, the the system of the biomass and also the the forest. And then the last but not the least, we have all the complete city. Uh, the population aspiration is 2.75 million. And still all the cities are interconnected by, water, by road, but also uh, public transport, high-speed rail, and also nestled around the green system. And hopefully with this, we can restore also the forest. We can live side by side in harmony with the, with the nature and we create a modern uh, 
uh, futuristic city for Indonesia uh, in the next uh, 25 years. Yeah. So with that, I can close uh, my uh, presentation about Nagari Banusa, capital city of Indonesia. Rani Sofian for your insightful presentation. I'm certain that the audience have found it to be a very informative presentation. Now we shall take a short sponsor break video, post which we shall proceed to our next speaker, architect Daniel Lim. I have great pleasure in welcoming you all for the Let's Connect program of Nippon Paint India Private Limited. This program is uh, specifically developed for the architect and the interior designer community uh, to be part of the Nippon Paint family. Nippon Paint, as you all know, is part of the Nipsey group, which is uh, 137 years old, originated from Japan, and we have widely spread into all the Asian countries. In India, Nippon Paint was started in the year 2006, and that's when uh, Indian Green Building Council was gaining momentum. And uh, we, uh, since the DNA of Nippon Paint is green, so we joined them in their uh, campaigning of uh, green initiatives and we became the founding member of IGBC, Indian Green Building Council. And right from 2006 onwards, we have been associated with all their initiatives towards sustainable products and services. And uh, uh, we are the first company to be registered and certified as Green Co for all our manufacturing process and the products which come out of the factory is also certified as Green Pro. Through this Let's Connect program, uh, we would like to take your unique ideas and your projects through video shoots and sound bites to the industry people and to the audience who are eagerly waiting. Through this Let's Connect program, we create an opportunity for you to share your unique ideas and success stories. You will also have an access to be part of the AYDEA program of Nippon Paint and also into various architectural conferences, CSR activities, what Nippon is carrying out in this country. AYDEA is a very unique, unique initiative of Nippon Paint wherein uh, it encourages and enriches the young architect and interior designing students across Asia and we call this as Asia's Young Designer Award wherein we want experts like you to mentor them. Through this program, we also create an opportunity for you to meet your peers and uh, work with them closely across the globe. This platform also allows you to create an access to the tools and product information of Nippon Paint and also there will be a dedicated Nippon team working closely with you. I once again take this opportunity to welcome you all into this Let's Connect program for a mutually beneficial experience. Let's connect. Asia Young Designer Awards by Nippon Paint is one of the longest running and largest student design awards in Asia. 14 years in the making, AYDA has worked closely with more than 1,200 educational institutions and have received more than 35,000 entries. AYDA has worked closely with professionals to help forge a closely knitted design community with the purpose of helping improve lives and communities. It is truly about cultivating the next generation of designers. If you're currently an architectural or interior design student, it's your time to shine. Help the world see designers who are able to envision the future of spatial design which addresses the evolving needs of communities while factoring in critical environmental and significant cultural factors. Your design has to be emphatic and innovative while addressing problems faced by both mankind and our natural environment. It is your million dollar idea that will land you the title of the Asia Young Designer of the Year.
which is worth up to 10,000 US dollars, alongside a once in a lifetime opportunity to attend an all expenses paid six week design discovery program at Harvard University's Graduate School of Design. On top of that, you will gain access to a network of AYDA alumni across Asia to help strengthen your perspectives and connections around the world. So, here's what we are looking for. Design concept. A design that fulfills an innate human need or helps solve a problem. Functionality. A versatile design that supports people, activities, and changes in life. Design innovation. A design which maximizes or leverage tech-enabled connectivity and or intelligence. Sustainability and relevance. A design which comprises of sustainable and eco-friendly elements which help preserve the natural environment. Aesthetic and visual impact. A design which is aesthetically pleasing and effectively integrates social and cultural aspects for the users. Color usage. A design which showcases a brilliant display of balance between colors, materials, and design outputs. Delivery and presence. We look forward to having you at the national and international finals where you will be delivering your ideas in front of a panel of professional judges. Will you be the next Asia Young Designer of the Year? Good luck and see you there! Join the Asia Young Designer Awards via www.asiayoungdesignerawards.com or follow us on LinkedIn. Or simply speak to your lecturers or faculty members who are involved. We hope to have you join the AYDA community. Good luck!